All right, welcome everybody. If you're here on the webinar, we wanna say thank you for signing up and registering. I'm Laurie Ledley, the founder and president of Valley Sleep Center. And I have my great friend, Dr. Paul Lynch here tonight. You know, one of my favorite things about you is that um, you kind of align in the same priorities with like faith and family or like your first priorities, but then you love changing lives through helping people um, with their health and sleep, as we all know, is one of the major things that we all need. And CBD has kind of been this controversial subject over the past, you know, few years. And now it's legal in all 50 states. And so I am so excited to introduce to you guys, Dr. Paul Lynch, to talk about, you know, the CBD product. He's actually found a way to develop a product that's made out of orange peels. Like who knew, like could come up with an anti-inflammatory. And I spent my whole life, my husband calls me Mrs. Itis, um, struggling <laughs> with inflammation in some way, shape or form with my autoimmunity and cancer. And I am the sleep lady, but I don't sleep because of pain. <laughs> and oh, it's hilarious, but true. So um, just want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lynch. And we're just going to have this casual talk about a webinar. If you guys have questions as we're talking or he's presenting, please put in the Q&A or the chat. And then after he's done, we will go over the questions. So thanks and welcome. Well, Lori, thank you so much for having me. And I do agree. I echo that we're very similar. I think I first met you because um, you put on a, a wonderful fundraiser to raise money for breast cancer awareness. And, uh, and I came to that and saw you talk about it and your passion for helping people. And we've been friends, you know, for three or four years now. And I uh, appreciate you giving me the chance to talk to, uh, um, to your audience a little bit about, you know, sleep, which I know is super close to your heart. But honestly, it's close to all of our hearts. Um, you know, as doctors, if we could help you sleep better, um, I mean, what a wonderful gift that we can give to patients. So um, I know people are still kind of joining. There's a few, but I think I'll go ahead and start if that's okay. And yes. I thought maybe you could stay on with me. And if you have questions as I'm going, you can kind of jump in and make it a little bit more interactive. And to the um, audience members that are joining right now, if you have questions, feel free to put them below um, in the chat. And, uh, and we'll try to answer any questions you guys have um, at the end. I'm going to try to give you guys a quick overview of my journey with CBD, a little bit of background about what CBD is, and then um, kind of some indications of what we're seeing um, on how it could work for sleep all in about 20 minutes. Um, and so that's a lot of information. We could probably talk for hours on it. Um, as a matter of fact, um, uh, if you guys tune in next Monday um, to our Facebook um, page over at Arizona Pain, we're going to launch um, our fourth episode of the Pain Show that we've been doing every two weeks, and it's all on CBD and medical uses across the board. And so um, that's next Monday. If you guys want to check back, we'll talk more about things like anxiety and pain and some of that stuff. But today I'm going to focus more on sleep. And so I, I guess the way I would start this is um, if you asked me you know, five years ago, if CBD was controversial, I would say yes, for sure. Um, and if you ask me that question today, I would say CBD is not controversial, but marijuana continues to be controversial. And I really want to make that distinction that when I'm talking about CBD today, um, I'm not necessarily talking about CBD from marijuana. Uh, matter of fact, there's four ways that you can get CBD. And I just want to kind of start with that. So number one, you can get CBD from your doctor with a prescription. Um, there is a drug in the United States that's been um, approved by the FDA in 2018. So it's only been around for three years called Epidiolex, and it's used to treat uh, mostly kids who have really bad seizure disorders. And so you can get CBD, um, pure CBD, um, from your doctor. Uh, number two, you can get CBD from marijuana, and that's the way most people are kind of aware of it. There's all these cannabinoids that are inside the marijuana molecule, and the two most common ones that people have heard of is THC, which kind of makes you high, gives you that euphoric effect, um, and the psychotic, you know, like this um, uh, psychic effect. Um, and then there's CBD, which does not get you high, doesn't have any really addictive potential that we know of, but that's within marijuana. So number one, you can get it from your doctor with a prescription. Number two, you can get it from marijuana. Number three, and this is where it starts to get really interesting. You can get CBD from hemp. And hemp, all it means is the marijuana plant that over time has been genetically kind of 
breed it, where instead of making you high and having THC, it has very, very little THC. The federal government defined it as less than 0.3% THC, that if that product has less than 0.3, then that's called hemp, and it's now legal in all 50 states. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, that's why I went to that five-year thing. Five years ago, it was illegal in some states, but the federal government passed the 2018 Farm Bill, and some people call it the, the, the Farm and Hemp Bill, because they legalized hemp in all 50 states, and that was just three years ago. A lot of people don't even know that. So that's why you've seen this explosion of CBD products, because we can now get them legally. So number one, from your doctor, number two, from marijuana, number three, from hemp, which is now legal in all 50 states. And number four is probably the most exciting and new one. And that's that you can get CBD from other um, molecules like orange peels. Um, and so the patients that in our clinic, we've been able to give them a CBD product that's actually made from oranges. The reason we did that is because we don't want to have any potential or any possibility that they would ever test positive on a urine drug test. And even if you get your CBD from hemp, because it has 0.3% THC, it still might cause you to test positive for a test that could get you in trouble at work with your employer or potentially in the pain management setting um, with the pain doctor. And so, um, so we have been providing for our patients now um, this kind of orange-based CBD, which is pretty cool. So I want to give you guys that background. So just if you are already starting off a little bit suspicious that you realize there's all sorts of ways you can get CBD that are legal, they're not controversial, that won't get you in trouble at church, won't get you in trouble at your job, um, and won't get you in trouble with your doctor. And so that is a background. I wanted to give a little bit of my own personal journey, Lori. Um, so um, I didn't know much of, about marijuana or hemp or CBD at all um, up until 2013. And then um, we were watching the news one night. And uh, if you guys get a chance, you can just Google this. It's quite easy. Uh, there's a girl named Charlotte Figgy. Um, and I saw her story on the news and her story was she had a tremendous, terrible seizure disorder and that seizure disorder would cause her to have seizures every 30 minutes to an hour. And they were life threatening because it would interfere with her breathing. Um, and so, um, I was watching this and what the story said was that, um, they had found a, um, a hemp derived CBD product, um, called Charlotte's web that could shut down seizures. And this girl's family went and got it for her and her seizures stopped and basically saved her life. And I'm watching this. Um, I have a son with a severe seizure disorder. His name's Austin. And um, he completely lost language at about the age of three or four. He stopped talking and we went to all these doctors and we found out that he had a rare seizure disorder that made him, when he would go to sleep, a lot of us go into REM sleep. It's a good way I describe this to people. When my son goes to sleep, his brain starts seizing. And so he'll seize, um, uh, back eight years ago, he was seizing 80% of the night. And so he would wake up in what we would call a post-ictal state. And he couldn't make new memories and he couldn't, um, he stopped talking almost overnight. And so it was quite traumatic for us. And when I watched this story of Charlotte and how she stopped seizing, um, I went to great lengths to get that for my own son, but this was 2013. And so it was much more controversial than it was difficult. And I tried to travel to Colorado and I made phone calls and we were eventually able um, to get him treated here in Arizona, but it was very expensive. It was very stressful, you know, for me, um, but it worked. And um, on his next uh, EEG, he went from seizing like 80 to 85% of the time to 8%. So it was like a 90% reduction in his seizures. And it was a big part of his story. Now, um, to be really fair, my son is still very, very sick. He still seizes. He's still, um, you know, we're, it's still, um, it's not like he's totally cured, but it has become part of his regimen. Um, since then, Charlotte's Web has come out with a product um, it has 60 milligrams of CBD and we give that to him once a day and it's part of his regimen. It works um, as well as any of the other medications that he's on to kind of control his seizures. And so when I went through that with him and I saw how much it could help him, it kind of started this research for me on why does CBD work? How is this helping, you know, our patients? And so I wanted to take a few minutes to kind of explain it. So um, number one, in 1992, just 29 years ago, we discovered what's called the endocannabinoid system. And I did not learn about this in medical school. They call it the, uh, the science practice gap where it takes about 10 years from the time the science is really clear on something before doctors start doing it, right? And so I started medical school in like 1998. This had just been um, invent, or found in, 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 I'm sorry, 1992. And they didn't teach me about it at all. 
And so a lot of doctors like my age or older never heard learned anything about the endocannabinoid system. So what is the endocannabinoid system? It is a system that kind of works hand in hand with our central nervous system, and it has internal effects. The easiest way for me to describe this is if someone goes running and they get what that's called the runner's high. Um, for years and years, doctors thought that was dopamine that was working in the frontal cortex. And dopamine we know a lot about. But as they researched this endocannabinoid system, they found out that the runner's high is actually from a molecule called anandamide, which is in all of our bodies and hits our endocannabinoid system. And I'm not going to spend a long time on the ECS, but it is a real scientifically validated system. It's our newest system that we discovered, right? We first discovered the central nervous system four or 500 years ago and the vascular system. This one we just discovered 29 years ago. So we know that there's two or three molecules, CB1 and CB2. We know that there's two to three neurotransmitters. The one that's known the best is anandamide and that it's in our body already. And that when people smoke marijuana or hemp or ingest any of these molecules, that it hits those same receptors that were already in our body um, all along. And so it's quite interesting um, that these molecules, you know, have this effect. And what we found about CBD is that CBD acts um, both as a neurotransmitter, meaning it hits these molecules in the endocannabinoid system, but it also works as a neuromodulator. Um, anyone that's uh, viewing this from our own, own Arizona pain patients, they may hear me talk about neuromodulation all the time. Um, we use a, a device called spinal cord stimulators, Lori, to help people that have severe pain. And we call it neuromodulation because we're changing the existing pathway of a nerve impulse to the brain. Well, what we found out with uh, hemp and CBD is they act as a neuromodulator also. So it modulates an existing hormone. A good example of that would be serotonin. And so we know that CBD can help with anxiety and depression. Well, how does it do that? Well, not only can it hit the receptors directly in the endocannabinoid system, but it can also hit the receptors in other systems. Like it can hit the serotonin receptor directly, but also it can modulate the effect of serotonin. And so it gets this really interesting but complex interaction in our brain. And, um, you know, if people want more information about that, um, once again, come back to our Arizona pain page next Monday. We do about a 45 minute talk on how CBD works in the brain. And I talk about it a little bit there. But just in the interest of time, um, I kind of want to move on. I want to describe to your viewers that CBD and THC are exactly the same molecular formula which is quite shocking to some people, it has the same amount of carbon molecules, the same amount of oxygen molecules. It's very, very similar, but the way that it comes together in the structure, one can cause like, you know, it's a psychoactive medication that causes euphoria and causes you to get high. And the other one actually relaxes you and causes you to be calm, which is part of the reason it helps for sleep. It's quite interesting um, from a molecular kind of organic chemistry perspective. They're the same molecule, but just arranged differently and have totally different effects in the brain. Um, and so uh, I talked to you guys about the four ways um, that it worked. I talked to you about how it's now legal in all 50 states to get CBD um, from hemp, as long as it's less than 0 0.3 um, THC. And then I want to talk to you just a little bit about the outcome. So there's probably six or seven things that um, CBD has been shown to really help. But the big three that I like to teach is you take CBD and it's like going to the spa. S-P-A. So the SPA. So what does that stand for? And this is pretty much in order of why people use it. Number one, the S stands for sleep, which is what we're talking about today. Two, the P is for pain, which is what I do. So what you do and what I do are the top two reasons that people try um, CBD. And number three, the A is anxiety. And um, it's a very, very long conversation on how it's working on all these things, but it's a combination of hitting the receptors in the endocannabinoid system, hitting some existing receptors in our brain like GABA and dopamine, uh, serotonin, and then modulating the effect of these existing receptors in our brain. So there's three different ways it can work, but you can remember taking CBD is like going to the spa. It can help with sleep, with pain, and with anxiety. And what does the data show? Well, the data shows, first of all, I, I kind of made some notes and I really want to impress upon the viewers how complicated it is and hard to prove whether or not it works. Okay. So you can do a Google search on CBD and sleep and you'll get a hundred different answers on what the mechanism of action is and does it actually work. And I just want to lay out for you guys that there's like four or five things that make it complicated. Um, number one, 
it, there's not a lot of studies on just pure CBD, okay? Because CBD exists so often with THC. So even um, I talked about Epidiolex in the United States, in the United Kingdom, they have a drug that's been approved there as well by like the UK version of the FDA. And it's called Sativex, but it's, it's a combination of THC and CBD at the same levels. So a lot of the data that shows they're helping people sleep better, it's CBD and THC. And then, um, and so it's hard to tell what about just CBD. So number one is doing a study that has THC and CBD makes it a little bit difficult to track. Number two, the doses are all over the board. If you look at the average CBD user in the United States, the average takes about 10 milligrams a day. Um, but all the studies have shown that 10 milligrams is probably not enough to help your sleep. And so all the published literature is somewhere between 25 milligrams and 300 milligrams a day. So there's huge variation in what dose. Um, the research that I've done has shown that around 60 milligrams is probably the sweet spot, 60, 60. So it's a lot bigger dose than what most people would just buy like on the internet. Um, 60 is the same dose, by the way, that my son takes for seizures. And I think at that dose, you get the maximum impact on sleep. And then there's multiple receptors. I already kind of mentioned that, but you're hitting the endocannabinoid system. You're directly hitting re uh, receptors like serotonin in the brain, and then you're modulating receptors. And so the combination of that has made it a little bit muddied, like at what doses does it hit what receptors? What I would say is over the next 10 years, we're going to learn a whole lot more about this. If you guys come back in 10 years and I'm still giving speeches like this, um, we're going to know a whole lot more, like how much of it's GABA and how much of it is serotonin and how much is cortisol. Um, but we know it's quite complicated to kind of track. And then here's the other thing that's kind of interesting. If we reduce your pain, you might sleep better just because you're not in pain. And so this molecule that's affecting anxiety and pain, if you're not anxious, you may sleep better. And so that's one of the things we see with the PTSD literature is that taking CBD for PTSD also helps your sleep, but it's, it's kind of interesting. What it's doing is it's, it's giving you less bad nightmares and because you're not having the nightmares then you're sleeping better. And so, you know, talking about, you know, how CBD helps your sleep is quite complicated, but my, my general very high level review is that when you look at like randomized controlled trials across lots of data, the overall effect is that people are sleeping better. Um, they're sleeping longer and they're waking up, you know, more refreshed. I can tell you anecdotally, um, the, uh, I've been taking it for about a year now and I take it before I go to bed. Um, and I'll do like a full dropper. I do a tincture, which has the best uptake. I'll do like a full dropper before bed. And I actually track all my data on my watch. A lot of people have smart watches. And I saw like an immediate, probably 25% increase in my deep sleep and REM sleep. Um, and I wake up more refreshed. Um, one of the things that patients ask me is, does it cause you to be groggy? Um, and the answer is no, it doesn't. It's not, it doesn't like uh, give you a big whack, like you're fatigued, at least not most people. It just, it calms you a little bit. It takes away anxiety and allows you to fall asleep. And once you fall asleep, you're able to, to um, stay asleep. If, uh, um, anybody that takes our product at our clinic and they have like a smartwatch, I've been asking them to track their numbers. And we've been across the board getting feedback that people are sleeping longer and specifically their deep sleep and their REM sleep um, have been improved. Um, so I think I've talked for about 20 minutes. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is stop there and then start to take some questions from you, Lori, or from the crowd yeah. if we have well, audience. I want to ask the question of would it affect different people differently, like depending on, because we all have our own endocannabinoid system, right? Everybody's different. So ha yeah. have you seen that where it might work differently for me versus someone else? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. And I'm glad you brought it up. And it actually allows me to talk about side effects too, which is one of the questions we always get. So when patients ask me about side effects, um, the number one thing I always say is if you're on Coumadin, that's the one drug that we've been able to find in the literature that we're careful with. CBD will increase the duration of action of Coumadin in your body and will thin your blood. Now it doesn't look to interact with any other blood thinners and Coumadin is not that common. We, we estimate it to be probably less than 2% of our patients in our practice, but for that one drug, it can prolong the activity. Beyond drug effects, um, some people get fatigued. So, so there are some people, maybe 10 or 15% that might wake up and feel, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. And so for people like that, um, I would say you can just reduce the dose. 
Um, it can sometimes cause nausea or vomiting or diarrhea, but these are very, very rare side effects. Um, in big doses, like with Epidiolex, it could uh, change like liver enzyme profiles over time. So if we have patients that are going to take it regularly, we recommend once a year just to do check liver enzymes, to check coags for like your clotting, um, and even just like a chemistry panel. Just um, I've been calling what we're doing over at Arizona Pain kind of like uh, medically supervised CBD use because everyone has questions about CBD and not a lot of doctors have enough experience with it. So yeah. if, if our patients are going to take it, we'll have them do, um, you know, yearly labs to get your original question. Yeah, we're all slightly different. Right. And so mm -hmm. my patient with PTSD, the CBD, what it's going to do for them is calm their brain down, have less nightmares at night. And they're going to sleep better. My patient has a lot of anxiety. It's just going to calm them down so they can go to sleep. Our patients with pain, um, they're going to get less pain and then they'll sleep better. And then you are more of the expert on all the different sleeping disorders and what would cause them. But generally speaking, um, uh, this is going to work a whole lot better than the medications we give patients to sleep better because it's actually getting you back into balance and closer to the person you're supposed to be, as opposed to kind of covering it up like these hypnotics that we use. What about um, SSRIs or antidepressants? Like, so we talk a lot about serotonin and so we know these antidepressants are sort of, they suppress that. So have you seen um, any contraindications for people who are actually taking antidepressants and then they supplement with something like CBD? Yeah, great question. So no, there's no contraindications at high doses, like 300 milligrams and above a day. There's been some literature showing that if you're on an antipsychotic for like schizophrenia, that it could make it worse. But the data is a little bit mixed. There's other data showing it can actually help. And um, most of the patients we're talking to are never anywhere near that 300 milligrams. I've been recommending like 60 milligrams a day. And at that dose, it kind of puts you back into balance is kind of the word that I've been using. And so for a patient who has anxiety or depression and they're taking an SSRI, I'm recommending they start this on top of it. I always tell them to talk to their psychiatrist or whoever's writing it so that they're in the loop on what we're doing. But generally speaking, what you'll see is CBD plus an SSRI, there's no contraindication. Matter of fact, it may modulate the serotonin receptor, which allows the drug to work better Even by modulating better. the uptake of the serotonin. That's great. Oh, this is a good question. Are there any studies or do you have any patients that show that CBDs can lower the number of apneas that they have? I'm not aware of that data. And I think it's something that between you and I, we should kind of look at. Uh, I was kind of wondering about that today. Would it help with sleep apnea? And I, I don't have any data to suggest that. Well, I, if you have obstructive sleep apnea, my comment would be, well, if you sleep better, your obstructive sleep apnea is probably going to be worse um, because it's anatomical. <laughs> right. I don't think, I don't know if there's anything in the world other than pressure and surgery that would open right. that up. Yeah. Uh, I would great agree question. With that. Yeah. Um, hey, if you're watching on Facebook Live, let us know your questions because I have them right here. And um, what other questions? I know they're out there. Come on, everybody. Let us know what your questions are. I'm going to look at the Q&A. Here's one. All right. You ready? Uh, how does CBD gummies compare to oil? Yeah, it's a good question. So there's lots of different ways to take CBD. Um, and, uh, you know, you can vape it. You can take um, gummies. You can take oil. What we have found is the tinctures probably have the best uptake. And so um, the tincture, you kind of put it under your tongue and then you kind of swallow it. And then I recommend you not like drink a bunch of water right after, but let it just kind of bathe the mucosa and it'll go down uh, along the mouth and the esophagus. And uh, that's where I think we have the best uptake and the best blood levels. It's kind of like, aller did you ever do, have you ever seen the allergy back in the day? I used to go to the allergy doctor and they would give me this stuff to put under my tongue and it would like work right away. It's sort of similar to that. Um, what about, um, what was I going to say? Oh gosh, I, I, I was on the track and then I forgot. Anybody else have a question while I have my little brain sidetrack? Uh, how do we get this? Like, I want to try yours. I'm, I'm like, um, is there like a link? Can we go on to like a website to try the one that, um, uh, is made out of the orange that I would love to try that. Yeah. So we, um, for any of your users, you can just go to our website, which is holisticpain.com. 
And Tori McJunkin is um, a doctor that I started at Arizona Pain. Him and I have worked on natural treatments for pain for about 10 years now, but we just recently released this product that has CBD in it at the doses we recommend and the form that we recommend. And so, yeah, you can check it out at our website, holisticpain.com. And I do see another question there. Oh, you put it there in the thing. So yeah. this one, there are a lot of products with both CBD and THC. Other than testing and legal reasons, why do you stay away from the THC combo? Well, um, it's a great question. Um, if, if there's no concerns, uh, for example, if I'm talking with my pain patients, we're, uh, the standard of care is basically not to give opioids if someone has even a medical marijuana card. And that's, I didn't make the standard of care, but that kind of is the standard of care. So we try to stay in line with that. So a lot of our pain patients don't want to test positive for THC. So we recommend for that. Some people have a job where you have the drug test once a year or on hiring, and they won't hire you if you're positive for THC. If you don't have any of those concerns, then I would recommend you can tr you try um, straight CBD versus CBD plus THC and see which one works better for you. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of theories that THC doesn't actually help you sleep well, um, that you may go to sleep, but then you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep. And it depends on your own experience. But I, looking at all the data and all the literature, I'm leaning towards CBD, pure CBD is better for sleep than CBD plus THC. But the, the jury might still be out on that one. Uh, you mentioned liver function. Does CBD impact kidney function? Not in a measurable way. I mean, at very, very big doses potentially, but not at not the doses we're talking about. Okay. And then can the CBD have an effect on a person who has heart, like a heart surgery, surgery patient? Um, and then are like, is there contraindication to any cardiac drugs? And then they say Zoloft, which we talked about SSRIs, which Zoloft, right, is part of that. Do you want to make a Yeah, so I'll kind of unpack some of that. So if, uh, if you had heart problem, the only CBD concern I would have is if you're on Coumadin or Warfarin, that it could increase um, your INR by up to 30%. So if you're on Coumadin or Warfarin, talk to your cardiologist before you start CBD. As far as just you had a heart operation, there's no contraindications to taking CBD. And then Zoloft, as you said, is an SSRI. And so CBD at 60 milligrams a day should not interfere with Zoloft. Matter of fact, it may modulate the effect of Zoloft on the uh, serotonin receptor. I would still talk to your psychiatrist about it, make sure they're on board, but um, adding in CBD might um, be a really nice adjunct. And I want to take it as an opportunity to say this, Lori, like I'm a board certified anesthesiologist and pain management doc. And what does that mean? Like, I love the medications we use. I understand how they work and I use them when appropriate. I would just say that something like CBD goes in combination with other meds. You're probably not going to use it as your only product, but if I have someone on a nerve pill, and then I could just increase the dose, increase the dose, increase the dose until they start having side effects. Or I could leave them at a smaller dose and add in CBD, which modulates the effect and maybe increases the effect at a lower dose. I like to do that. So in my practice, I'm always combining kind of Western medicine and Eastern medicine, like natural treatments with standard of care. Um, and so once again, you need to talk to your doc and make sure they agree with that. But combining CBD with Zoloft could be a great idea. Well, and speaking of that, I want to just, I, I know that, you know, I've had cancer twice and a lot of things over the years, you know, I wanted to try, but been afraid of, you know, sharing it with my physician or judgment. So I think what I would like to just encourage everybody on the webinar, if you're watching on Facebook, don't be afraid to share with your physician. Like, it's really important that you tell them like, this is what I'm doing. Like, um, because it's 2021, almost 2022, we need to be um, in communication with our providers, letting them know um, what we're doing, what's working, what's not working, because I think at the end of the day, most physicians, they all they want to do, they went into medicine because they want to change lives and they want to help you. But if we're not telling them what we're doing, they can't, they can't help us. And so that's sort of been the, the history of, you know, stuff that was illegal, that's now legal, like, don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm trying this you know, it's working because they need to know what you're taking. It's, would you agree with me, Dr. Paul? I mean. Oh, I mean, for sure. And I think that um, it, this is like a changing landscape right now. And so like, as I, if, when I go research and Google these things and like even preparing for tonight's talk, I mean, there's been five or six things published this summer that would change how I teach this even compared to, you know, wintertime. We're talking 
explosion of data and science over a three-year period of time. The federal government basically legalized hemp in all 50 states, and people started coming to market. Epidiolex was approved, so we have all this new information. You know, one thing that I want to say to your viewers that I didn't say before is um, Epidiolex has been kind of a game changer, but it's so expensive. So I've been trying to get my own son on it. And, you know, he's been very stable on about 60 milligrams a day of CBD for a long time, but Epidiolex is more like three or 400 milligrams a day. And I want to see if that can help his seizures even more. And we got denied by the insurance. It costs $3,000 a month for him to be on Epidiolex because CBD is so expensive. And I bring it up just so that you understand like how special of a molecule this is, but how expensive it is to kind of get. And so what most people do when they go buy a CBD product, they go on the internet and they Google it and they buy whatever they can afford. And what most people end up buying is 10 milligrams a day. And 10 milligrams a day, while it might be affordable, it's just not going to work. So I'd really suggest if you want to get a sleep effect, at least 30 milligrams a day, but probably more like 50 or 60 to get a sleep effect and be re and realize going in that it is an expensive molecule. It won't be $3,000 a month, like what I'm trying to get from my son, but it is an expensive molecule. And all the way back in 2013, it was one of the things that discouraged me from it was trying to afford it. But today is a very special time because more and more people are making it. And we really can treat people at an affordable price range. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there taking a lot of different medications to fall asleep, um, or you might use alcohol to help you fall asleep. And so I want to just point out that like what helps you fall asleep doesn't help you stay asleep. So right. you know, be, be right. really mindful of that. Like it might help you fall asleep, but it's going to wear off and then you're going to be awake and it just creates this whole you know, um, effect that's not good or healthy. And again, just know that just because it might help you fall asleep, it's not going to help you stay asleep and not super healthy. And so it is nice to know that there's alternatives um, coming about and we're learning more and more about CBD. So if I'm anybody, glad you said that about yeah. falling asleep, I just want to say real quick, that's the main dig on THC is that it helps you fall asleep and then you wake up and you can't get back to sleep. And so CBD by removing the THC actually helps you fall asleep and stay asleep, um, which for me as a doc, you know, that's what I want. Right. How about tinnitus? Does it help with tinnitus? Great question. A lot of people struggle with that ringing in the ears. Yeah. I'm not aware of that in the literature, um, but uh, yeah, I'm not aware of that. I would think if it's inflammation, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't hurt to try. So I, I would, uh, You'd be surprised at how many different things people have studied CBD for, but um, I'm not aware of that one. Well, gosh, I want to say thank you so much. If you guys have any other questions or you want more information, you want to consult with Dr. Lynch or you want to consult with Valley Sleep Center, please reach out to me. You guys all have my email after this. And I uh, just want to say thank you so much for doing this, Dr. Lynch, and good luck with all your research and can't wait to try mine. Thank you everyone right. for joining us and uh, we'll talk to you on the next show. Thanks, Lori. I appreciate Bye. you. Bye. We'll see you Monday. All right. Yeah. Check on Monday. Um, I think you'll get even more information. Have yeah, a great Arizona night. Pain. pain talk. All right. <laughs> Bye guys.